Hi everybody, it's Franny, and have you ever thought about putting a lift or multiple lifts in your garage? In this video, we're gonna cover the pros and cons of living with lifts in your garage. Now we've had these lifts for several years because we only have a three car garage, yet we have six cars. So we've got several positives to go over and there are some negatives to owning a lift as well. Let's start with some of the positives and I say at the top of the list is safety. Now these lifts provide an excellent platform if you wanna work on your car. Let's say you wanna get underneath there and you wanna change the oil or you wanna work on your car a bit normally what you would do would be to put the car up on jack stands and uh, I've done that so many times and it seems so precarious those guys sitting up there and just feels like it could fall over at any minute mm, not the safest thing in the world but with the car sitting on all fours when you're working underneath it you don't have to worry at all you can get underneath there and do what you need to do way way safer than using jack stands another great feature of the lifts is security believe it or not we have our classic car sitting up on top of the lift here, which will make it a bit more difficult if somebody wanted to break into the garage and steal the car. They gotta get it off the lift. So I think that is also a great feature. Another great feature of the lifts, of course, is doubling your garage space. Now we have six cars, but we only have three bays. So with our three lifts, we can get all of our cars inside. And that's huge if you've got classic cars because you really don't want them sitting out on the driveway or out back or something exposed to the weather because you bought this wonderful car and you're so excited about it. If you have to leave it outside, then it just sort of rot. That's probably one of the biggest reasons you're looking for a lift in the first place. Another interesting point is that if you have a car that leaks a little bit, and our poor Miss Ava here, she does leak a little bit of oil. The nice thing about the lifts is they always come with these drip trays underneath here. And so if you've got a car up there that leaks, it's leaking onto the drip trays and not onto the bottom of your garage floor. And that's gonna make it much easier to keep your garage clean. One small downside to having the lifts in your garage is that it can get kind of dark underneath here because it blocks the light from the ceiling. But it's actually a positive because we can add these LED strip lights underneath the lift and give us a ton of light underneath. So if we need to detail the car, we can really get in here and still see really, really well underneath here because we've got all this extra added light. And you can add multiple LED strips. You could add tons of light underneath here. And it really helps if you want to detail your cars. And one last thing I'm going to mention is that the lifts really do help you organize your garage. It makes you set up actual bays to get the cars in. And for us, that was a big help because we were just had stuff kind of crammed up all over the place. And this really helped us organize the garage. Now there's tons and tons more positives. And if you are thinking about getting a lift, I'm sure you have a lot of positives that you're going through for this. So let's take a look at the few of the cons of having multiple lifts in your garage. Top on the cons list has to be how tight these things can be. Now, now our I-8 is really, really wide. So in order to put it in the garage, we have to pull the mirrors in and we have to be very, very careful as we pull it in so we don't scuff the car on one side of the lift. It does make it very difficult to get a very wide or very big car into your garage. Another con to the lifts is their height. Now this is as high as our lift will get and it's about five feet, seven inches. So if you're shorter than that, like Heidi is, she can go underneath the lift just fine. But for me, not so much. So I'm 5'9", and I'll bang my head on it here. And there's a few sharp points here. There's one here, and there's also a sharp point here. So I bang my head on this lift several times, and that <laughs> really gets old. And when you have guests and things over in the garage, you've got to explain that to them right off the bat and say, whoa, 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 watch out for the lifts, because they are black. And wow, we've had several guests whack their heads on the lift. So that's definitely a con. Another important consideration is just how high is your car. Now our i8 is actually pretty squatty so we've got plenty of room here but you also have to take into account how much room you've got above the lift as well. Our ceiling up there is 11 feet 7 inches I think so we have a pretty fair amount of room up there but we did reorient our garage doors to be as high as possible and when we've had the Volkswagen Beetle in here, the 
cute little cabriolet. We actually had to lower this lift down a notch because that car is really tall. And when it's on the lift, it would have contacted the garage doors. So it's just these sorts of things are things you want to keep in mind when you're out shopping for a lift. Another important consideration is that when you have a car up on the lift, you're going to obviously have to pull the car below out to get this one down. So shuffling the cars around in the garage can be kind of actually a real pain. You're like, oh wow, I want to go out and I want to drive whatever car and you're looking up and it's up on the lift and you're like, oh, do I want to take it? Do I want to get the car out? Do I want to get it? So I don't know. It's a consideration. It's something that we definitely have struggled with a bit as well, especially if we have to move cars around and we want to put a car up because we want to work on it. It seems like it's about half an hour moving things around before we get everything resorted. Another consideration is the space between the edge of your lift here and the wall. And you're like, why? Well, because that whole swath is going to be taken up and you could have an interference if you tried to put in some big shelves up above here with your car that's on the lift and you don't want that to happen. So it can in some ways reduce a little bit of your wall space as well. Another problem can be getting your trash cans, your lawnmower, your snowblower, whatever you've got out of the garage. Our garage is actually pretty small for a three car garage. So we have our trash cans on the other side. And it's it's just that the thing, normally we'll have a car underneath here and the lift will be up and we can't get it out. We have to back one of the cars out in order to get the trash can out. Kind of a pain in the buns actually, maybe not the biggest deal on the planet, but still, kind of a problem. Normally in the winter we store the snow blower right here at the base of the lifts and you kind of see this rusty mark here is from the front bell of the snow blower. That means that our car on the floor here in the middle needs to be pushed all the way forward in order to get the snow blower out because we can't back our car out into the snow. You know a couple of things you have to think about. You're like oh my gosh how am I going to get these things in and out of our garage now that we have these lifts in the way. Another important consideration is the power. All of these lifts are 110 volts, which means you can plug them into a normal outlet. But because of their initial inductive load, when you turn them on, this bit here, they draw a huge amount of current and can pop your breakers. So we had an electrician come in and break up all the circuits in the garage from the lighting to the lifts to the workbench and everything give us separate circuits for everything and that really has helped. Also it's very important to learn the safe operation of the lift. It doesn't have that many controls. It has a big arm up here for releasing the locks. Then it has our power button for raising the lift and our hydraulic bleed for lowering the lift. So all of our controls are very close here. The reason this is so important is that we want the lift to finally, when we're all done, be sitting on all four locks. So you raise it up a little bit above the locks, hear them slam, and then allow the lift to come back down and seat on those locks. But if you don't do that properly, it is possible that you could have two locks connected and two locks not connected and the whole lift could fall on one side. And I think we've all seen those crazy YouTube videos of a car falling off the lift or the lift crashing or something really, really bad happening. So it's very important that you familiarize yourself with the operation of the lift and operate it safely. Now, as far as as maintenance on the lifts, it's really low. There's not much to do at all. I do take a little bit of silicone spray and I spray the white plastic blocks that run up and down inside here that, the, that these carriers run on. They'll start to squeak after a while if you don't put some type of lubricant on them. Also on the lock stops here, these little rectangular holes in this plate, I like to put a little bit of lubricant on them as well. There's a little bit of grease here you'll see. And that also helps, I think, with this, with this block sliding up and down. And that's really pretty much all the maintenance I do on these things. Other than that, there's just not much that goes wrong with them. And finally, not completely related to the lifts, 
is our epoxy floor. And you're like, well, why are you talking about the epoxy floor? Well, because the lifts sit on top of that epoxy. And you're probably wondering, if you put an epoxy floor on, would it crack the epoxy everywhere? And we haven't found that to be true. Now, our epoxy went in probably, oh gosh, 12 years ago. So it's been on the floor for a really long time. We have had some issues with it. It doesn't like battery acid. Battery acid will eat it up. And we have had it break up in a few places, but really not bad at all. But the lifts have not been a problem at all with the epoxy floor. They haven't cracked it and they just sit on it just fine, probably because of these plates. These plates are huge and they distribute the load really well. And of course, you know, you've got four of them. So if you're thinking about putting one of these lifts in and you've already epoxied your floor, I don't think it's going to damage it too much. Well, that's been our experiences, pluses and minuses living with these lifts for years. Heidi, do you have any additional thoughts? All I want to say is if somebody were to ask me, knowing all the pros and cons, if I would go ahead and buy lifts again, and I would say absolutely, I think it would even make a difference on whether or not I was going to buy a specific house with a specific garage height. I would probably make sure that the garage was high enough. So yes, it keeps your car safer, it allows you to have a larger fleet, and it's really been a good learning experience, and it really does keep everyone as well as the car safe. Yeah, 100%. I totally agree. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video and other car related content and you haven't subscribed to our channel, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to get notified of every new upload we bring you. Well, thank you so, so much for watching. And as always, a very special thank you to our Patreon supporters. Until next time, safe travels. Bye.